everybody, welcome back to another Sims 4 build challenge. Today, I'm going to be trying to renovate this house, which in my opinion is one of the saddest looking starter homes in The Sims 4. And the catch is that the starting and ending budget has to be about the same. So, I'll give you guys a quick tour. So this is the outside. We've got this whole like weird situation here. We've got just interesting back porch area, which is too bad because this area is so scenic and so beautiful. And then inside the house, it's just super, super dark and very empty. So in other words, it's a classic EA build. Like what is all this empty space? Why is this weird room divider here? Why are the windows taller than my sim would be able to see in? What is with the color choices? Why is it so dark? And also, why is the bedroom not closed off? And then the door is over here. That seems so inconvenient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself a fresh budget. And since the objects lose a little bit of value, if you decide to sell them, I'm gonna just give my sim um, let's do 800 simoleons as a buffer, and let's start the renovation. When I'm renovating an EA house, there's usually two really big things that I look at, and or actually three really big things. First, they always use medium walls, which I think are terrible, so I always put them back to short walls. The next thing is that they're always super dark. Um, so I always replace the lights and then the third thing is that they're always a little bit too big and usually the starter home we have a pretty tight budget so I usually make the overall build a little bit smaller. So my first step when I did this is well not only making it smaller but I took out all the furniture and I kept the stuff that I wanted in my inventory and then everything else I sold um, and then I just decided I'm going to paint the whole house just like a nice bland color and then I'm going to work from there to kind of redesign the doors, redesign the whole thing. So it hopefully looks a lot nicer. And I had a lot of fun doing this. I've actually, I've renovated Nookstone before and it's just, it's so sad. Like, it's so sad. And you can see I'm going through quite a few different um, looks to try to figure out how I'm going to maximize my budget. Because I also made myself use just the Sims 4 base game. And let me tell you, the windows in the base game are expensive. Like, the same big windows that I have on the corner of the house in Eco Lifestyle are like 30 simoleons. And then the base game ones, exact same thing, they're so much more money, which is terrible. But now, um, going back to the inside, I just painted the walls all white. And then I figured I'd pick a nice basic flooring. Uh, I really wanted to do like a cool flooring, so that way it would be fun, and then I looked at my budget and I decided absolutely not, I can't afford it. Um, and then I also, I wanted to make the kitchen a lot bigger, because I wanted to preserve like the open floor plan, but I wanted it to feel like it was a more full house, and it was a nicer house, and I also wanted to add in a lot of color, which you'll see uh, I'm starting to do here, um, but I was trying to decide how it made sense to do that and I really really had to fuss with the floor plan and fuss with the budget a lot. Um, later in this video or later in the speed build you'll see me check the price of the house on the gallery and then I just added enough simoleons so that I'd actually get to the same starting cost because the 800 I added at the beginning of the video was just my estimate of how much the objects would lose their value and I was pretty far off. But a couple things that I wanted to change about this build were I wanted to make sure that the bedroom was closed off and I also wanted to add in a second bedroom or not a second bedroom space per se but just a second space to use. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it a kids room. I ended up making it an office because I figured that would be kind of the most flexible way that you could play in this house would be that if you had just two single sims you could have them move into this apartment, play how it is. If you have one single sim, just play how it is. Otherwise, if you have other sims, you could put like a toddler bed into the office space. You could put, make it into a kid's room, kind of whatever floats your boat. Um, and I wanted people to be able to play in this. So that's why I decided to make a base game only and keep it the same budget and try not to go too crazy on anything because 
I want it to be a colorful, fun starter home that you could move a sim into and you'd really look forward to playing in it. Um, so here I am starting to try to save money, checking the budget and adjusting the amount of money I have so it's the same ending price as it was initially. Uh, and hopefully when you look at this you'll decide that it looks a lot better. Um, trying to figure out the layout of the bathroom given how I did the door, just playing around with scooting the door. I want to make sure that everything was functional, I wasn't blocking anything off. Um, now I'm starting to put some tile in, trying to figure out what types of colors I wanted to put in here. I debated a lot what I wanted to do in the kitchen. You can see me trying like 15 <laughs> different wallpapers and I hated all of them and then I didn't like how the windows were looking and then I felt like the whole thing was too empty. Um, but I really like how it turned out in the end with all these different colors in the house. I like the bright yellow couch. Um, I wanted the bedroom to be fun. Trying to make the little office area fun too. Um, and I didn't want it to be like a super super feminine house or like a super super masculine house. I just wanted it to be kind of fun and colorful. You could imagine moving in like a blogger or an artist um, or something like that into this house and having this house really fit who that type of sim is uh, and I kind of do that a little bit when I build I like to build a sim or make a sim first and then imagine that I'm building a house for that sim so you can see out in front I have this kind of artsy looking sim and she was my inspiration for how I wanted to build this house um, and I found that that was really really helpful for me as I was envisioning how I wanted this to go together I think the, one of the hardest things about this build is just the lack of good base game rugs. See me kind of trying to figure that out right now and I just couldn't find the right thing and the right size. I just wanted a like, basic rectangle rug in like a bright nice color and we don't really have those. Um, so that was kind of a struggle, especially not in the budget that I was working with. And you can see here now I'm going back and forth about what type of front door I want and trying to pick a cheaper one so that I can have other nice things and I really couldn't make it work with a cheaper one so then I decided that I'd make the kitchen even smaller, make the build a little bit smaller, really squish things in. And this is where there's just a lot of playing around with the dimensions of the build, how small I could make things, what types of cheap art I could put up so this would look like it wasn't totally sad and lonely, you know, like putting a plant in the corner because I wanted it to feel furnished, but also not make it feel too cluttered, you know, because it's a starter home, you'd expect that your sim wouldn't have a lot moving in here, but I didn't want it to just be empty like it was before because that was a big thing I wanted to change. I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be colorful and I do think I succeeded with that. I'm, I'm pretty stoked with how it turned out. Um, Definitely use some debug landscaping because um, I couldn't afford anything else. And I almost put the big pink flamingo out in front because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, and then I decided to use a little bit of self-control and maybe not use the big pink flamingo in a desert build for once. Since I do use them maybe a little bit too often. Um, but I really love using the debug landscaping. There's just so many good objects in there um, that you wouldn't necessarily think to use. Um, that's great. And then this is another good build hack if you're trying to build on a budget is to use the train paint for your stone patios so you don't actually spend money on the floor tiles. And yeah, so that's the whole build. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's just here I am just putting a couple of last touches on the outside because I decided that the white was a little bit boring. I decided to go with the blue and make it look a little bit pretty, prettier. But yeah, so this is on my gallery. It's called Nookstone Reno. If you want to download it, it's base game only. So anybody can download it. Anyone can play in it. Also, if you like this video, you should give it a big thumbs up and subscribe with notifications turned on so you'll know next time I post a video. And also comment down below of what type of video you'd like to see me make next. I'm always open for suggestions and I would really love to hear what all of you think. Alrighty, I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone!